thanks for making space for CNN 10. That's a pun on our first story, because it's about space. Why do we do puns? Because Fridays are awesome. I'm Carl Lazus for CNN 10. Up, up, and away we go. This week, China announced it had teamed up with Russia to build a new space station. Their next steps will be to come up with a design, a way to build it, a way to operate it, and then to present those plans to the rest of the world. They're calling the facility the International Lunar Scientific Research Station, and Russia says it'll be open to all interested countries and international partners. The Soviet Union, from which Russia emerged in the early 1990s, had a space race with the United States. In 1957, the Soviet Union became the first country to launch a satellite into orbit. It was the first to launch animals and eventually a human into orbit. The United States had leapt ahead by 1969 when it landed men on the moon, and Russia fell further behind in the space race following the collapse of the Soviet Union's communist government. In more recent years, Russia was a founding partner of the International Space Station, but China has not been allowed to participate in that project. The U.S. outlawed that out of security concerns. That's part of the reason why it's significant that Russia partnered with China on the new space station. Experts say it could signal a new era of competition as opposed to cooperation when it comes to international space projects. As two longtime space powers, Russia and the United States, start to distance themselves from one another, Russia and China are teaming up with plans to build a new research facility that could orbit the moon, be on the surface of the moon, or even a combination of both, inviting cooperation from around the world and signaling that the Russia-U.S. space alliance may be on the way out. Russia did not sign the Artemis Accord for lunar exploration led by NASA. And Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, also lost its monopoly on manned flights to the International Space Station after SpaceX jumped into that game. But now, China's national space agency, CNSA, which has a lot of money, is looking to work with Russia and their 60 years of experience. It was 60 years ago this year, in fact, that Russia launched the first human into space. And this would be China's biggest space cooperative uh, operation to date. They already have a probe orbiting Mars. Last year, they brought rock and soil samples back from the moon. It was the first mission of that kind in more than 40 years. And so China and Russia are looking to compete with NASA as it continues to make strides. There is, of course, the uh, Perseverance rover that NASA has that did a test drive on Mars last week, sending back audio and high definition pictures looking for evidence of life. There are early plans for the U.S. to send humans to Mars. And there is also a plan to send the first woman to the moon in 2024. Russia looking to regain some of its space supremacy built over decades but lost in the post-Soviet years. 10 second trivia. Which of these deserts got its name from a word meaning desert? Namib Desert, Chihuahuan Desert, Sahara Desert, or Kalahari Desert? In Arabic, the word Sahara means desert. Outside of Antarctica and the Arctic, the Sahara is the biggest warm weather desert on the planet. It's about the size of the United States, and there's debate in the scientific community about whether the Sahara is growing. Some experts say the desert has expanded over the past 100 years by as much as 10%. Others say its area naturally fluctuates depending on the amount of rainfall at its borders and that a drought in the late 20th century only made it look like the Sahara had grown. There's also debate over whether the Great Green Wall, a massive tree planting project across North Africa, has been working. Its progress since 2007 has been slow, and critics say natural weather patterns and bad farming practices are more to blame for desertification than the Sahara itself. Regardless of what's happening with the desert, though, the Great Green Wall project continues to grow. It received $14 million in funding earlier this year to continue its efforts. The Sahara Desert. Remote. Romantic. It's also a threat. What I love about the desert is uh, it's very peaceful, but in the same time it's very scary because when desert enters the houses of people, pushing them to live uh, because they have no more livelihoods in their communities, it's scary me. Desertification is a process which transforms once arable land into a barren environment. 
It's something that Sarah Toomey witnessed firsthand. My grandparents, they were growing olives and under the olives trees, they were growing uh, beautiful gardens with vegetables and other crops. Now, let's say uh, 25 years after, they don't grow anymore their food. So they have to buy food from the shops. And I think it's very sad. Desertification can be reversed. Toomey's project, Acacias for All, has cultivated almost 700,000 deep-rooted trees in the region, improving soil structure and allowing for other trees and crops to be planted nearby. It's very easy to plant a tree, it's not easy to grow a tree. And that's why, what I learned in Tunisia from just planting acacia trees into growing agroecological ecosystems with communities, creating value chains that sustain the ecosystem. Tumi's impact in Tunisia led her to want to do more. She's been invited to join a program of epic proportions. Great Green Wall is about giving life back to the desert, to the Sahel. The Great Green Wall is a patchwork of restored lands across the entire continent. Expected to stretch 8,000 kilometers by 2030, covering 100 million hectares of land across 11 countries. The aim is to create a natural shield against desertification. Up to now, the Great Green Wall initiative had filled up about 18% of uh, the, the objective. So yes, you have another 80% to go. I, I am optimistic. It's a question of making sure that that part of Africa gets the attention it deserves. For Tumi, Desertification is a threat that affects us all, and the work is urgent. Artworks, baseball cards, historic musical instruments, and dinosaur skeletons. We've covered auctions on this show before. This one constitutes a virtual field trip to the Bahamas, where you can get your own private island. Little Ragged Island is the biggest one for sale in the nation. It's got 730 acres for your resort and golf course, deep water access for your large ships, an airstrip on a nearby island for your planes, and it's only a 10 minute boat ride from there. You need $100,000 to bid on it, but after that, you might be able to snag it for less than its $19.5 million listing price. Or you might not. But if your plans to land an island and shore up your days in sun, surf, and sand to roll the paradise out just like you plan to own trees in the palms of your hand, it's a peach when the beaches and reach at your side, and it's fine when the time coincides with the tide. If your day-by-day -day stay becomes a vacation, float a boat and a note you wrote to denote the notion that's our invitation, and we'll see you on island time. Hey, speaking of time, be sure to spring forward an hour ahead on Saturday night so you don't miss a moment of our show next week. Shout out to Marriott's Ridge High School in Marriott'sville, Maryland for subscribing and leaving a comment on our YouTube channel. I'm Coral Azus for CNN.